Hey, so this is actually my first time spending a night alone here on my property. So I got a fire going. And I brought some wieners and some hot dog buns and I'm gonna make some hot dogs and enjoy a meal. It's about nine and it's August. So it starts to get dark. Uh, so it starts to get dark uh, earlier nowadays. So I'm kind of gonna take advantage of it while I can. The nice thing about this time of year is the bugs are not as bad. I'm saying that while I'm actually being eaten alive. But honestly, they're not as bad as if they would be in like June or July. So basically I got two days here where I can actually get stuff done. Yeah, so the goal is to clear an area and actually like build a little shelter or something. So I got like that right now for now. It's not really a shelter. It's actually two IBC totes there. But eventually I want to build an actual shelter so I can start bringing stuff because it's a pain having to bring everything every time. So there's my tent and there's my solar setup. My truck is there. I got my cooler. Pretty much set up for camping, really. But the cool thing about this is that it's my first time camping alone. And it's my first time camping on property that I actually own. Like, this is actually pretty surreal. 40 acres of land that's actually mine. This is one of the small areas that's already opened up, but it's very close to the road, so I don't really want to build anything here. So my goal is to use the chainsaw and the pole saw to kind of cut through the trees and build a trail. I haven't decided where yet. It took longer than I expected to set everything up, so that's why it's dark. Like I started packing probably around like noon. Actually, it was more than that. I think it was more like 11-ish. I mean, I should have started at like 8, but I like to sleep in, so. A lot of this is overgrown. Like, I brought my Wee Whacker, but I didn't bring enough string, so I ran out of string. And then, thankfully, I at least did a decent area, so got that going. Yeah, so this is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to be sleeping in a tent with an air mattress, and of course, I got my power set up here. Actually, let's check on those batteries. I'm charging some AA batteries in here. For the for the um, this thing here, those are fine. Nice, nice. So we're sitting at twelve point two volts. That's the main battery. These batteries are still charging. We're at two hundred and forty nine milliamp hour. I'm honestly not sure how high it's gonna go. Actually, it probably says on the battery what the rating is. These things were like dead. I can't really see. 2400. Yeah, so it got it has a long way to go. This is not really a fast charger. Like what I probably should be doing is I should probably remove two of those batteries and then they could charge faster. But by the time the mosquitoes really come out, I think I'm gonna have enough power to run the racket anyway. Hopefully. Then I got a lantern here, which is Pretty nice. Yeah, that's very bright. And then what's cool is it has a USB here, so I could just bring this in the tent with me, and if I want to charge my phone overnight while I'm sleeping, I can. But yeah, welcome to the property. I mean, this isn't my first video. I don't really know what to make of the video of because I don't really have a end goal. Oh, that fire is really going now. I didn't even eat yet. I only I had like a half a sub for lunch. I kind of gave myself a challenge and figured I would eat once I get here. So I had a bit of some little roll cakes things. I don't know what they're called. And then pop. So I'm not even feeling that hungry, but I got some hot dogs there ready to go. So just waiting for a bit of more coals to set up. Hopefully the mosquitoes don't get too bad, but now I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear machinery in the background. And it looks like they're doing logging not far from my property. Yeah, there's a lot of logging going on around here. Now, it's kind of funny because as a kid, I would have seen this and I would have been saying, like, oh, they're destroying the forest. Why are they doing that? But reality is, it's industry i mean we need wood to build stuff and most of these companies are fairly responsible with how they manage the forest 
I mean, it, you know, some might be better than others, but in general, they usually replant. I think it's safe to say that we're probably losing trees faster through forest fires. I mean, you hear of like hectares and hectares, like hundreds of hectares, even thousands being burned like daily. I mean, no logging company is cutting down much, at least I don't think so. But yeah, so it's been kind of interesting to see all the logging going on here. If I can find some pictures of some of the log piles that are ready to go, I'm going to put them up from previous times that I passed by. Now, the good thing about the logging going on here is that these people, they, they keep the roads maintained. Because if ever the logging stops completely in this area, I don't know if they're going to keep maintaining the road or not. But they're also not going to be destroying them as much. So I think they kind of maintain them because they're the ones destroying them. So with the big trucks and all that. So it's kind of a trade-off. But I mean, in, in spring, there was a big washout and they fixed it. I mean, that probably wouldn't have gone fixed that fast if they weren't logging. But anyway, kind of going on a tangent here. I just can't believe I'm actually here camping alone on my own property in the middle of the bush. This is about 10 p.m. right now. It's pretty dark out now. You can definitely tell that that summer is close to an end. Because I can barely see any light in the sky. I don't think this will even show up. I'm actually using my phone right now because I don't really want to bring my camcorder. But I don't think the camcorder would show it either. There's a big dipper over there. Yeah, I don't think you're actually seeing anything. Might be able to see an outline of the trees a little bit, but I don't actually see it on the screen here. Yeah, so it's getting dark. It's getting a bit cold. It's about 15 degrees right now, which is, it's comfortable. Like, it's kind of nice. But when you get away from the fire, it's definitely a bit cold. Just roasting a wiener. I just had a pop, which was probably a bad idea because I think at this point I should probably be winding down trying to go to bed, but I'm probably gonna end up going to bed late enough anyway. Might as well enjoy this night alone out in the wilderness. I have a pretty busy day tomorrow because it's supposed to rain the day after. So technically I should try to get everything I want to do tomorrow and I should actually leave because I don't really want to sleep in a tent when it rains especially if it rains the next day then I have to dismantle it in the rain I don't really feel like dealing with that so but I'll see I'm gonna look at a forecast I'm hoping it changes because it would be nice to spend another night out here I did bring in a food it's not the most nutritious food though hot dogs but it's the easiest food to make when you're out here because I don't right now I don't have any running water here so it's like to try to do anything that requires dishes is kind of a pain at least with this I could just use a stick like even something that would require like a pot or something it's like it's kind of hard to clean that out here even when going in like a provincial park or something they have water there so I mean eventually I do want to get water out here but That'll be tricky because sometimes it goes below freezing at night. So I need to make sure that whatever system I have in place that the pipes don't freeze. Like normally you have to bury them like really deep. I don't exactly have the equipment for that. So I'm kind of toying with the idea of doing like a loop. So like I'll have like the water tower and then I'm going to have an underground water pipe system that goes to each building or each faucet or like whatever I decide to do. But it'll basically create like a loop. And then I'm going to have a pump that just keeps that water running all the time. And then each building itself will be heated. Like even if it's like solar or something, and then everything's going to be really well insulated. So I'm thinking if I do that, it should keep the pipes from freezing. And in the winter, I'll probably just purge the lines. But yeah, it feels pretty crazy to be out here completely alone. Like this is actually my first time camping alone, let alone on my own land so this is kind of cool so it's 10 47 almost 11. it's definitely getting dark and the fire is dying i'm kind of debating on if i want to put another log on it or call it a night i think i'm gonna sit around here for a while just look at the stars can't quite tell if you can see on the 
phone. I'm kind of hoping you can, but I can't see it myself on the screen. So I don't think these are showing up, but the stars are incredible. I mean, I've seen this before. Like this is not nothing new, but every time I see it, it never gets old. And I'm surprised, but they're actually still logging out there. I don't know if you can hear that on the phone, but I do hear heavy equipment running. It like stopped for a while around like 10, 15. So I kind of figured, okay, that was probably their break time because it was pretty dark at that time too. But yeah, they just kept going. I don't think that's going to keep me awake or anything, but I have to admit it does kind of take away from the silence and the nature. But they do stop every now and then, so. There's the fire. Yeah, I'm very debating on if I will put another log. Maybe I will. If I can actually find the other log. There it is. I kind of have to be careful too because I don't really have a lot of water here. That's definitely something that I want to change. Because normally I like to just douse out the fire, but now I just have to be very careful, make sure it's not windy when I make one stuff. We're not under a fire ban anymore, so I mean, I wouldn't be making a fire if we were. But still have to be very careful. There's still a lot of forest fires going on. Ah, why not? I'm gonna put another log. I just put away the fan, so I can't cheat. I'm gonna let that go on its own. I might even just keep recording and time lapse it. I just wish it was nice all week because I could totally see myself spending a whole week here. I mean, if I had shelter, it wouldn't be so bad. Like if I had like an actual cabin, I would stay. But yeah, I don't want a chance I would attend. And I'm here to actually do work. So I can't really do work when it's raining. I don't want all my tools and supplies and stuff to get wet. I haven't been recording a lot of the progress because it's kind of tricky to record at the same time. I mean, I always use that excuse. I mean, it's kind of the point of making YouTube videos is to record the actual work, but yeah, so I've, I've kind of been lazy that I, I just kind of do the work without recording it. And with my phone, like I didn't bring my camcorder or my tripod either, so that makes it a little bit harder. But I'll probably walk you through the progress as I go along. There's actually a trail I want to show you tomorrow. I don't have mineral rights on this land, so there's actually some trails that the prospectors made at some point. I'm not too worried. I don't think they're ever going to take the land or anything like that. Like they actually need permission to come on, I believe. So those trails were made before I bought it. And there's all sorts of rules, like they can't prospect near a cabin, that kind of stuff. So I'm not too worried about not having the mineral rights. But there is a lot of rock and quartz, so there's probably gold here. So it would be nice if I had the rights because I can actually mine it myself. But maybe at some point I'm gonna look into what it takes to buy it, buy the rights. I think if ever there's a mine that opens, they're probably just gonna mine underground. So I mean they might come here to drill, but that's about it. I'm hopeful nothing nothing crazy is gonna come from that. Yeah, so that log is not really catching. I think a lot of this wood is wet too, so that doesn't help. Oh, there it goes.
I wonder how freaked out those loggers would be if I just randomly walked up to the work site. Probably think there's like a Sasquatch or something. I have to admit it would be kind of funny, but probably a bad idea to work it, to walk into an active heavy equipment site in the dark. So yeah, not doing that. And it looks like it stopped now. thing about being this far is that anybody that does come here is usually like a working class person that's you know responsible so the odds of like getting stuff stolen is probably pretty small as long as it's not like literally out in the open because I mean I would never expect the loggers to steal anything or even hunters you know when it's hunting season there's not a lot of campgrounds around here but I'm sure people come around to camp I mean, it's possible that some people have even come on my land to camp and have a fire because sometimes I see logs in there that I don't remember that being there. It doesn't bother me too much because, I mean, there's no sign saying private property, so nobody would know. In town, it's like it's so bad now with all the crackheads and stuff. It's like children's bikes get stolen all the time. Car parts get stolen. I mean, I even had my starter stolen. It's terrible. I'd rather not get into the politics of why it's like that, but I think you could probably all imagine why and you know, what side of the political, political spectrum is enabling this. But yeah, let's not go there. This might turn out to be a long video. Just kind of like a relaxation video, really. Tomorrow we get to work. It's just incredible looking at the stars. I wish I could actually share that. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to share some pictures that I've taken before. I mean, even in town, especially in winter, I can pretty much see the stars like this. But there's just something about being out in the bush in the middle of nowhere and seeing it. It's incredible to imagine that our sun is just one star of many. Like all these stars are like our sun. Some are bigger, some are smaller. But they're so far away that we only see a dot. Kind of looking forward to playing with that radio. I might have to show some footage of that, see if I find anything interesting. Especially being out here, there's like pretty much no interference. Well, except for the inverter, maybe I should turn off the inverter. I know with AM radio, I sometimes pick up like Toronto area, sometimes even the States. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Looks like I picked up something in the States. I feel like I should just make this as a separate video. Campfire ASMR. 
get thousands of views. They must be stacking the logs now. I can definitely hear more racket than a while ago.
years to go for a walk where the road is just to see how dark it really is. It's definitely dark. is very uneven so I need to be careful too. It's dark but it's not pitch black either. There's definitely some light in the sky. And I mean I'm far from town so this is not like light from the city or anything. thing that's incredible is there's no bugs like in the middle of summer like the bugs would be brutal right now especially in the bush I can actually see the Milky Way this will not probably this will not show up on phone but I'm pointing it up there anyway Yeah, this is actually pretty incredible. Like, I've been to the provincial park, but even over there, you don't quite see it like I'm seeing it here. Like, I can actually see the white in the sky. And I just saw a shooting star. But I don't think the phone picked that up. <laughs> All right, let's go up more in the road. Put it more flat. I just need to watch for log trucks, just in case. I'll hear them coming. I wish the phone would be picking this up. Or maybe it is, who knows. But I can definitely see it light at the horizon. Like basically west, like where the sun set. And the other side's a bit darker. But there's definitely a bit of ambient light, like it's not pitch black. Oh, there's another shooting star. If this just shows up as black, we mean not talking, I'm probably just gonna cut out this section. All right, back to where the fire is. That's you're getting cold. I can't even see the fire. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm touching the truck right now and it's actually wet. This time of year we get kind of like not really a frost but kind of like a almost frost Twenty-eight minutes. This particular video. This is probably the longest video I've taken, non-stop. Oh, it's getting kind of warm, but it's not too bad. I'm supposed to be able to charge it with either the radio or the lantern. I should probably test that. Cause I'm just assuming it's gonna work. I mean, worst case scenario can charge in the truck too, but I'm trying to rough it here.
All right, I think I'm gonna call this. Okay, so I survived the night. It was very cold, it was like five degrees. So it was a bit chilly, especially going out for pee. That wasn't very fun, but yeah, I managed to pull through, everything's fine. It was my first time. I mean, it was pretty uneventful other than the fact that it was a little cold. And the, the loggers were pretty much going at it all night. So it was actually, once I was sleeping or trying to sleep, it was kind of loud. But the good news is I actually talked to one of the truckers I was passing by and I wanted to see if they can help me clear an area here. Because if they can do that here, it'll take out maybe like an acre or two and also make like a trail. That would save me a lot of work. Especially if they can make it nice where I can actually drive my truck to the site. So I don't have to walk my lumber back and forth when I'm building. So yeah, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm hoping that they show up early enough today. Because I do plan to be here most of the day. But I will be leaving at some point. Like in the evening. So yeah, we'll see what happens. It's about 4.20 in the day. I didn't do as much progress as I wanted to. But I did start. One thing I always forget with these kind of projects is I can't tolerate heat. So the minute I start working out, doing even something basic, I start to sweat and get all uncomfortable and sticky. And my work kind of slows down. But as you can see, they clear an area. I'm leaving some of the stumps kind of high up because if ever I want to remove them with like a jack or something, it'll give me some place to like grip with a chain. Some of these I pull by hand. I'm going to need a brush cutter for this part. There's a lot of blueberries here. And when I say blueberries, I actually mean berries that are blue. These are not actually blueberries, but they look like them. Don't eat those. And sometimes they grow with blueberries, so you got to watch. Like, those leaves here, I'm pretty sure those are blueberries. Yeah, I did see some actual blueberries around, but there's not a lot of them. Unfortunately, I'll probably have to cut all this anyway. So the trail keeps going. I mean, some of these trees were already felled, like that big one, but I've cut a lot of small ones. I'm trying to avoid cutting the big ones, like that one would be a nice one to cut because it's kind of like in the middle. But I'm going to wait for the answer from the loggers because if they're willing to actually clear for me, I think I'm better off leaving the big ones so they can take them because that's going to be kind of part of the deal. And it's easier with your equipment to cut it when it's already standing because it's like a big claw and they're like it just goes around and then there's like a saw blade that cuts it. So yeah, I'm going to leave those up. I did cut a couple big ones that were like dead center where I wanted to go. Now the goal today is to get this trail somewhat smooth because I want to be able to bring supplies in with like a dolly and basically just like hide it somewhere. So the trail keeps going here. No, I did some half decent progress. Oh, there are some actual blueberries. Let's see how those taste. Oh, they're always so good when they're fresh. Reminds me of my grandma. I used to go a bit blueberry picking with her all the time. I need to bring her out here sometime and she can see what I've done so far. She brought me camping when I was like two and that was kind of my first introduction to camping. So yeah, so this is sort of the trail. I didn't really have to do much here. And then, oh, it actually goes more on this side. That's why I didn't cut that small tree there. Now here it gets a little rough. It'll be very hard for a dolly to get by because I was kind of hoping to start turning this way. Actually, it was sometime, somewhere over there that I wanted to turn. I kind of missed it. But the problem is there's a big rock there and it's going to make it too hard. So for today, I decided I'm going to cut in an area where I can just put my stuff here and tarp it down. So this is where the trail keeps going. It's kind of a diversion. And here's another, not a blueberry. Again, don't eat those. I don't know what happens if you eat them. I've just been told not to eat them. And then look at that over there. If you eat that, you grow bigger. Actually, I wouldn't recommend trying that. But it kind of looks at, like the same mushrooms as Super Mario, doesn't it?
Yeah, this is pretty much where I'm stopped. I'm kind of debating what I want to do because if I cut more of these trees and open it up a bit, I might be able to put my solar panel stuff here and just leave it here. And that all save me from having to drag it back and forth every time. But I might just deal with that another time too, so. Yeah, but yeah, this is it for the trail. So far, anyway. I'm still debating on if I stay in at night or not. But if I stay in at night, I'm pretty much going to just leave tomorrow morning. Like the rain actually changed. It's only supposed to rain for like two hours. So I might just stay. Yeah, I'm going to want to get a brush cutter. All right, end of this part of the video. All right, so I'm actually back home. I didn't do as much as I wanted to. I'm just recording this downstairs in the server room because it's not as echoey as the office. I figured I would still use my phone just so that the quality is consistent with the rest of the video. Yeah, so basically what I did is I cleared a little bit of a trail. I'm really hoping that loggers get back to me and actually decide they want to clear an area because I kind of realized that it's futile to try to do it myself. I mean, it's doable. It's just that it's going to take so long. Like I could probably spend another summer just clearing and I really want to actually start building. Now another idea that came to mind is I might just build a temporary shed where the tent was. Problem with that is it's visible from the road, so it might get stolen. But I might just take that chance because there's not that much people that go there anyway. And I can always try to kind of camouflage it a little bit, like I can like shove some tree branches against it or something. Because if you're just driving by at like normal speed, it's very easy to actually miss the property. So maybe if I do that, I'll be safe. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. But for now, I'm going to wait for the loggers because I did actually talk to the operator of one of the pieces of equipment and he gave me the number to the boss and I actually spoke with the boss. Like I actually called the number and he said he's going to look into it. So I sent him some GPS coordinates so he gets an idea of where and then I kind of outline about what I want to clear. So I'm just waiting for a response at this point. So I'm really hoping that they actually do decide to clear for me because that's going to save me a lot of work. But I'm also hoping that they don't just cut the trees and leave. Like I want them to actually like pack down the ground. Like wherever they clear, I want to be able to actually get a truck there. That's the whole point. That way I don't have to like walk all my materials far. Like I can literally just pull the truck right where I want to build. So that would be perfect. But yeah, one thing I learned from all this is if I want to do work on the property, I'm almost better off just doing day trips because the time it took to pack everything and unpack and then pack it again and then unpack it again, I actually spent more time doing that than actually doing work because there's just so much stuff that needs to be brought and then I have nowhere to protect it from the rain. So the logistics of doing an overnight trip right now is very tricky just because I don't have anything there. So I think I'm better off just doing day trips for now. And I just need to kind of be disciplined and try to get up like super early, like even like five, six o'clock in the morning. And then by the time I get there, I have most of the day. And then I could leave at like eight, nine when it's starting to get dark. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. But either way, I wanted to do an overnight trip on my property anyway, because I kind of wanted to experience doing a trip alone that far out and it was kind of cool to do that so if I decide to do it again it'll probably be more of a camping trip than a work trip so I'm not going to bring all my tools I'm just going to bring the stuff I need for camping and this video was kind of all over the place like it I didn't record much of the actual work I literally have like one clip just showing a little bit of what I cleared so the next time I might actually bring my tripod and my camcorder so I can do it properly because with the tripod, at least I can kind of set the camera down, and, you know, go do some work, do a time lapse, whatever. But either way, after going through all the footage, I decided to just put this video out anyway. It's kind of a chill video if you just want to follow a camping adventure, basically. And if you didn't, well, that's fine. But if you actually watched through the whole thing, well, thanks for watching. And this is pretty much it for this video. So have a good one. Bye.